Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Look at that. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. A specimen. And Joel Nelson. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. Today on In-Depth Outdoors, winter is back with a vengeance. We had it easy at the start of the ice fishing season. Today, we're out in Michigan on Bay Dinoc, and let me tell you, conditions are brutal. Uh, I'm fishing with Paul Delaney today. We got out here before sunrise, and we've spent the last half hour or so getting our camp ready to set up and fish this morning out here. We're chasing big walleyes, and I love fishing with Paul Delaney because he's one of those guys that just always seems to have the pulse of a great walleye bite. So do stick around. It'll be Paul and I on Bay Dinoc today here on In-Depth Outdoors. Woo! So today's Monday, and you've been here since what, Friday? Came Friday night, yeah. Well, let's talk about the weather change. I mean, obviously, if we're sitting inside a house like this, uh, conditions are horrible. Uh, we would love to be outside just punching holes and running around, but I mean, it's just absolutely inhumanly cold out there right now. But to give people a better understanding about the conditions we're facing, let's kind of backtrack a little bit, a couple, two, three days. Let's talk about what's happened since you arrived here on Friday. Oh, Friday, I drove up in a rain sleet storm, you know, and we had, 34, 36 degrees. It was warm for several days before that, um, you know, and so that was a warm day on Friday. Saturday was a pretty stable day. Barometric mm -hmm. pressure was steady. And then Saturday night, we had this cold front come through and yep. it's, we have not had much cold this, this season. This has been a substantial cold front here. And, um, you know, we woke up this morning, it was two degrees below zero. So well, when we left the Twin Cities, it was six below zero, I believe. And, uh, you know, the way we do this show is we film Monday and Tuesday almost every week. It doesn't matter what the weather's doing. So not only are we trying to protect ourselves from the, from the elements by staying inside of the Otter Hub here today, but we're also, uh, there's some strategy involved here. Uh, when you're talking about catching neutral or, or even completely negative fish, uh, to be hole hopping around, the chances of you bumping into that one fish that in that moment mm. that's willing to take a nibble, very yeah. low. Uh, so we're on a spot that Paul has caught some fish here over the last couple days, and we're just going to sit. And we're going to wait for those few fish that we might be able to coax into biting to come through this area. So yeah. uh, this is all about staying warm, but also about a strategy to actually put some fish on the ice. Today. Yeah, I mean, we've, both you and I have been through this situation before, and we'll be through it again. Um, the best thing for us to do is get into a proven area where you know fish are using that area and wait for those windows of opportunity. They might not be large, there might not be a lot of opportunities here for us today, but the key thing is sitting in these spots, keeping our baits in the fish zone here and just waiting for those windows of opportunity and maximize what we can take advantage of. Here we go. Just don't want to get too aggressive with it there, just kind of slowly pull it away from them. He's coming and he came up, he didn't come up hard. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Got him, got him. He hit it. Yep, that's the one. Any meat to him? No, no, not big. Will you remind me why I fish anything other than that little white ripping wrap? Well, You're making the whole go water jump up and down, buddy. Seems to be the one that's getting bit. It's the right hey. flavor. Hey! Hey! I bet you that's what uh, was uh, chasing that sucker minnow. Yeah, he could have spooked him, yeah. He could have just been sitting underneath the hole there. Nice! But he did not bite it hard. You can see, just barely got him there. Those hooks are so fine wire. They're yeah. like little needles with barbs on them. Do you need a little uh, pliers, sure. maybe? Definitely to, not to those big fish that we're looking for here, but. Well, Paul, I've, I've nice got to point one. out that you are a little skewed as far as what is a good fish and what is just ah. uh, an average fish. Out in here the, uh, in the bay, you are spoiled with some gigantic walleyes. Well, you know, I mean. 
you know, Little Betanak has a reputation of being a great trophy fishery. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of big fish that make their way here in the fall and will stage here in the in the winter time, getting ready to spawn in these rivers here. But uh, definitely a nice quality walleye. Nothing wrong with him anywhere in the walleye belt. Um, just not one of those super tankers we're looking for. Yay, Paul. But we'll take them. <laughs> okay, well, we'll go ahead and let this guy go here. Way to get us started, All Paul. Right. Yeah. Now, you said we probably wouldn't catch any fish till that sun came up over the treetops. Yeah, well, it's just coming over the trees now. It's starting to get a little bit lighter. The other morning, uh, it was dark. We weren't seeing much. It was after the sun got up a little bit. Um, we started seeing the movement, so we are starting to see some fish now. And, um, well, there's, there's one of them. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. Yeah. That's a heck of a start. Yeah. And that one was caught here on that little ultralight number four rip and wrap. That's that pearl color. That's worked best for us over the last couple days. Now we have tried some different colors. We have had some success on the gold shiner along with the green UV. Uh, but by far this uh, pearl has been our best color the last couple days. So I'm going to continue to run that one and see how things go here this morning. And we'll just watch the fish's behavior. If they're coming up, we need to make a color change. We certainly will. Uh, but that was a nice start on that bait. All right, well, I'm going to get that back down there and see if we can get another one. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born, forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster, powerful, durable, reliable. The WX2060 and the MX2040 from Skeeter Boats. Loaded with a long list of standard features anglers want at an unbeatable price, including a Yamaha VMAX SHO250 horsepower outboard, Yamaha T9.9 .9 kicker with remote controls, Lowrance HDS12 Gen 3 touch at the dash, and a Minn Kota 112 Ultera on the bow. The WX2060 priced at $59,995. The new MX2040 priced at $58,995. More comfort, more standard features. When you move up to a WX2060 or MX2040, you get more of everything. VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-sinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail Soft Baits pre-rigged on VMC Tungsten Jigs, and the innovative Tungsten Chandelier Jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. Right here. Okay. All right. Paul, I'm going to give it to him. All right. He should have it. Got him. Got him? Yes, oh, I right. do. Hey, looks like a little better fish. That's on that bigger sucker. Yeah. It's coming at you. Here. He hit it with authority, man. Yeah. I just heard that line going. Yep. Well, it's got that bait clicker on it, you know, that bait feeder, I should yeah. say. And you just hear that. Great feature. Yeah. It's gonna be a decent fish. I don't think it's gonna be our giant, Paul. Well, that's all right. He <laughs> ate a big. Uh, he ate a big minnow, which I like to see. I think he's gonna be a decent fish. Yeah. I mean, it just—it's just a real patient, heavy yeah. fish. Oh, in that deeper water there, you know, we had quite a bit of line out. Well, I was fishing about a six or seven inch sucker, so I definitely wanted to give him an extra yeah, second him, or two to eat snack. It. Let him eat it. Oh, come here. Ooh, there we oh. go. Boom. Oh, There's that bobber stop. Those want me to help? Yeah. Get all down right. in here. <laughs> Come on now, fish. Yeah, we don't want to be too hard on him here at the hole. You know, he hasn't pulled that drag yet. I'm fishing a uh, what they call a uh, a sure set treble hook. And I just love. Oh, there he is, big fish. Yay! Six, six pounds or so. Not the prettiest one you ever saw, but. Not. The, what do you mean he's not the prettiest one? <laughs> I haven't even landed it. He's already giving my fish a hard time. <laughs> You're a tough. I didn't customer. get a real good look at him, but I bet well, he's. He's five pounds or better, yeah. See, you got me excited because 
Paul is one of the rare fishermen that I've ever met that always underestimates the size of the fish and the number of fish caught. Okay, he just can't get his head in the hole. It's a nice fish, James. I'm gonna be nice and patient here. I've got eight pound fluoro on the leader. You know why he can't get his head up the hole? He's a big fish. He's a good fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Like I said, you're usually pretty good about underestimating one, huh? Yeah. Nice. We're gonna call that fish speedy, because uh, I bet you I gave him what? 15, 20 seconds of time oh, to take yeah. that line. Yeah. And uh, he was bent for the races. But you know, under these conditions, with this cold front here, you know, we want to make sure, especially on a bait that large, yeah. make sure that that fish ate that bait. Well, let's see where we got him. Let's get the sucker minnow out of there. Pull that out if I can. Uh, he didn't get it very deep. Now, the challenge is going to be getting the sucker Just minnow out of there. had a big bait in the mouth there. Paul, what we're going to have to do here is you're going to have to. Hand that fish over, okay. because doing the, the two-man doctor this, system this here is just not working. Yeah. Thank you. There we go. Finally got a hold there of it. Is. There's the sucker minnow we're fishing. He has seen better days. Once I got that sucker minnow out of the way, so much better. All right, there she's loose. There we are. All right, what a super fish. That's why we come out to bathe the knock, right there. Beautiful fish. She's got a little... Uh, character to her. Yeah, a little you see there. that. Yeah. You know, it's not the largest fish in the system by any means, but that's a great quality fish and, um, you know, there's bigger fish out there and hopefully we'll be able to see one or two of those today, but hey, it's a great fish. One of the bigger fish, one of the bigger walleyes I've caught this winter, so uh, I'm not going to kick. That's a, that's a nice fish as far as I'm concerned. And I know you guys that fish Green Bay all the time. This to you guys is just, a, just an average fish. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of big fish, but listen, under these conditions that we're faced with here today, um, we're probably not going to get a lot of bites, but these are the ones we're looking for. Absolutely. Yeah. That is a long, that's kind of a thinner fish. Yeah, would probably you, a male. Maybe call that a male? Yeah, I would all say right. so, yeah. All yeah. right, call it a guy there. That's a male fish. All right, I'm gonna let them go. Beautiful coloration out here. Yeah. I mean, they're just so dark and yeah. got that nice golden sheen to them. And a lot of gold to the fish. Yeah. That, uh, that's a nice walleye. He's an arm. He's an arm. <laughs> How long was it? A whole arm. See you later. Whoop, See you, whoop, girl. Whoop. I love it when they get that tail above water, they try to get traction. Goodbye. Off they go. Great Very fish. cool. Absolutely. I would have Absolutely. loved to have had it on uh, a jigging rod, but hey. actually catching them on those sucker minnows is pretty we're, cool. We're going to keep these down there. It's an extra bonus uh, bait for us. And you know, if they're not going to be too active on our jigs here, we've got this sitting down there. And hey, bonus fish. I'll explain what we got going on here with this setup. This thing worked out great for everybody but that guy. <laughs> He's feeling a little rough. Boy, it's chewed up. So basically, this is just a kind of a standard dead stick. Um, 32 inch tuned up custom dead stick. Got uh, six pound fluorocarbon on the reel. I got eight pound fluorocarbon at the leader. And all I've done there is I've just tied in a barrel swivel about uh, 10 inches above the hook. Eighth of an ounce egg sinker slides on the line. I prefer those over uh, just regular pinch on sinkers. I just hate how they damage the line. They will, yeah. You know, if I'm gonna break off a fish in a dead stick uh, over the course of a winter, I'll just about guarantee it'll be right where I got that, mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. split shot on there. So try to avoid those if I can, particularly if I'm gonna be fishing big fish like I am out here now. And then just uh, threw a little bead on there, just for some color. I know I'm fishing some stained water out here. And then I've got a number six sure set treble. And these trebles, I've been using them for a while now. I think uh, Will Roseberg and I kind of got turned on to these fish and tip ups on Mille Lacs Lake. And they've got two normal sized uh, barbs and then one much larger hook there. And what we do is we hook that into the minnow itself and it leaves those two smaller kind of normal sized mm -hmm. uh, uh, barbs, those points exposed. And what we don't get is we don't get that hook setting back into the minnow. Exactly. And you know, a lot of times you get those big fish come in and they just engulf that bait. And don't the only way to lose them is if that hook sets back into the minnow. Well, this pretty much eliminates that. My hooking percentage with these hooks is just phenomenal. That's a number six. Worked out well for that fish. Yeah. All so right. Well, let's get another bait on and get it back down there. You don't think that one's going to work? No, we're done with that one. All right. Right. <laughs> At Markham, we know being the leader in ice sonar performance doesn't mean we get to rest on our laurels. Introducing the new iSeries line of flashers. Every model in our new iSeries line combines a bright and vivid display with Markham's advanced sonar technology to produce flasher sonar units that offer a larger display and increased viewing angles without compromising Markham's legendary sonar performance. This winter, don't settle for anything less than an iSeries flasher from Markham, the most powerful high-performance flasher sonar units ever built. 
VMC's dominating line of panfish baits just got even better. With the introduction of new baits molded from high-density tungsten, the Miracle Metal that offers the same weight as traditional lead at half the size. The platoon of new baits include the Tungsten Fly, fast-sinking VMC Nymph and Waxtail soft baits pre-rigged on VMC tungsten jigs, and the innovative tungsten chandelier jig that targets roaming panfish like a fish-seeking missile. The next time you hit the ice, tie on a tungsten, and you'll be fishing fast and taking names with VMC. From the first time you pick up a tuned up custom rod, you'll know you're holding something special. A rod not mass produced, but built one at a time by the hands of gifted craftsmen. Rods like the Precision, ice fishing's most versatile multi-species rod, or the Precision Noodle with a tip so sensitive you'll never fish a spring bobber again. And the Commander, the rod that's never met a big fish it couldn't best. Tuned up custom rods, ice rods handcrafted for you and the way you fish. another one. I got one too. And they look like walleyes to me. Oh, this is a walleye. Look at the size of this one. Come on. Got him. All right. Get him home. I got him. I got him. Let me get the locator on there. I got it. Okay. What are the chances a guy on a cold front day is going to be catching fish on a rip and wrap? Well, I think sometimes it just gets them upset and there's only one form of defense and that's their mouths, you know? They don't, <laughs> they can't push it away. Mouth to. They can't say get out of my way. Mouth to bait combat. It's a walleye. Nice. It's not a giant. It's like the one that uh, I just lost a minute ago. I had one just like this come up and just smoke it. Come here. <laughs> Slide out of there. Careful. There he That's is. what I needed to do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, on a day like today where it's warm inside here, but it's bitter cold out there, I'd have gone in up in my armpit to well, get that fish. <laughs> they've made it tough on us here today, but. Well, you know, it's we're seeing fish, but I mean, this is the kind of conditions that you're gonna face. I mean, everybody's familiar with this. Uh, you go from those warm conditions to just really cold, high pressure, bluebird skies like we got right now. It's tough. Oh, they've made it as tough as it can possibly be. But, you know, we've been on this area here. We've been seeing the fish come through. You and I just both lost one. It gets a little frustrating, but, you know, we just got to keep at it here. Oh, we're kind of getting into a good part of the day here. Let's just hope to get a little bit more active and we can put a few more fish on mm -hmm. the ice. Now, of course, you know, there's a lot of big fish in the system, and that's what we're fishing for. Absolutely. But there's a lot of year classes like this for the up and coming future future big fish absolutely yeah. beautiful looking guy if i was looking for a fish sandwich he would be a very likely candidate but i'm not so back he goes yeah i bet you he won't hit anything hey. with that uh, <laughs> kind of rattle again in the near future <laughs> not tonight i think i learned him oh just that plain white shad colored rip and wrap number four you know we'd go with a little bit larger bait if we could get away with it it'd have some bigger hooks which would help with hooking up on these walleyes but uh, given the conditions, given the very low activity level, I think this is the best combination. I mean, if I can get away with it, throw a number seven down there with those bigger hooks Go and have at it, but yeah. I don't think we'd no, see a lot of fish today. Uh -uh. down top of the ice today. No. Here he comes. Come on, Paul. Got him. There we go. Yeah. Got him. Nice fish. Okay, finally. The big man got excited here. I figured well. I better come over and grab a <laughs> transducer. You know, we just had that other fish come up and look at it and turned it down. He looked real good the way he yeah. came up. You know, out here on Bay de Noc, there's so much quality potential. I mean, you'll see some marks on these Markhams, which, you know, they create a pretty fine line. And you'll see some marks that, I mean, they're as wide as your thumb. When, All you see, when we see those three quarter inch marks, those are the ones that get me excited. <laughs> you have the chance at just catching those super tanker fish out here and you just you just never know if it's going to be a 21 22 or 31 32. 
Yeah, I mean, you've had fish uh, 15 pounds. We have over the years. We've been blessed to have a lot of big fish out here. 15 pounder will get your uh, picture in the newspaper. Oh boy, 15 pounders are not that common. Yeah, I haven't seen him yet. I have every line in this house up. Just before you caught that one, I had a, just an absolute blimp of a mark on my nine. Sure did. Come up twice. I thought he was just going to come right through it. And this one just came up solid. You know, you know those fish that are going to bite. Yeah. You know when they come up and close that that gap there real quick. He's getting close here, Jay. Let's see him. Just in about the about leader. A, I'm going to say about five pounds. Okay. Oh, look at that. Just barely hooked. Come back just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's the victory dance. There he is. Oh, nope. look at that. Fell right off. <laughs> Great job, buddy. Good job, yeah. That fish yeah. is very, very cooperative right now. <laughs> He's just sitting there. It's not, not going to last for long. <laughs> nope. It's all what yours, man. What just happened to me here? Yeah. Yeah, definitely not the largest fish that we've seen here yet today, but uh, a nice fish. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of fish out here right now that are in this. I'm going to guess that fish around 20, 19, 20 inches. Yeah. There's just a lot of fish out here. Not five pounds like I guessed it. When no. I looked down in the water, and of course, he was a lot bigger. They looking. always look a little bit bigger in the water, but just a gorgeous fish. Just a great specimen. He's an upcoming future big fish. Well, we're starting to see some movement down there, so let's get this one back in there and put another one up on the ice. I want to see one 30 inches long. You bet. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Here's your flasher back. Let her get some traction. See ya. <laughs> They're really good at swimming when the tail's in the water. They're really poor at swimming when it's out. <laughs> Here you go. Thanks, bud. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this winter, set a trap for your next trophy with iFish Pro. Ideal for all species, iFish Pro is an innovative fishing system that allows an angler to use their favorite rod and reel instead of trying to manage the fish hand over hand. Oh, right Complete your ice fishing arsenal with iFish Pro, tactical ice gear that puts the fight back into tip-up fishing. Look at that. Find iFish Pro online at iFishPro.com or at your favorite sporting goods retailer. Everything you'd expect from a premium quality fish house and so much more. Glacier combines superior craftsmanship and premium quality materials to produce a comfortable and enjoyable mobile base camp for your next outdoor adventure. Available in a variety of models, a Glacier Ice House offers more standard features, more usable space, and a better fit and finish than the competition. Visit our website at GlacierIceHouse.com to find a dealer near you and see why a Glacier Fish House is the ultimate way to play. Nearly 70 years ago, a simple idea was taking form in the heart of the ice belt. That idea was, if you combined a commitment to quality with a passion for the sport of ice fishing, you could build a better ice auger. From that idea, StrikeMaster was born. Forever committed to innovation in the quest to build a lighter, more durable auger. StrikeMaster, powerful, durable, reliable. another one I just had one over here Paul you do? just come up racing yeah here comes one right now James oh, here he comes here he comes oh what in the world do we got here James my I, fish I told you here comes one <laughs> you want me to get that flasher? He yeah, come, I think fish. I can get him oh man it's walleye -ish. you gotta be kidding me I don't think we have a walleye on here Oh, there he is. Look at what we've got here. That's not a walleye. That is not a walleye at all. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Uh, look at that. All oh, right. <laughs> Bonus hey, fish. You fish, you fish the Great Lakes, you deal with a smorgasbord, oh, man. Oh, my goodness. That's cool. I was never think that we were going to poke one of those today. And boy, did he eat that. Man, you know, and those last two fish that we missed, yep. that didn't bite, I mean, came up racing so aggressively. This thing just showed itself up, bang, and there he was. <laughs> That's hey, cool, pretty buddy. cool. I never thought we would see one of those today. You upsized. I you did. upsized two steps. Okay, and there's a big reason for this. We've had a tough bite here today. Yep. We haven't had a lot of big fish. There's a lot of big fish in here. So I said, you know what? More of our fish have reacted to this bait before mm -hmm. than any other bait we use. I said, I'm going to go real loud. I'm going to go big. I want those big walleyes. Why not? It worked. It worked for this well, guy. Wrong species, for, you know, good intentions. <laughs> yeah, but that was cool. Yeah. Hey, fish. Hey, you betcha. He's not very happy with you. No. Hey, pretty cool. Yes, very cool. 
So not only are there big walleyes, northern pike out here, but you get the bonus trout. Nice, Pretty man. cool, yeah. All right, well, let's let this guy go back and swim for another day. That's a fat hen, isn't it? Uh, it it looks like, yeah, the, the females typically have the smaller heads. Yep. Yeah, pretty fun. See ya. There Bob. she goes. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Now, you know how excited I get catching big walleyes. It was a walleye until we saw its nose. It was a walleye until we saw its nose. That's right. <laughs> cool. And you're still getting them out of ripping wraps. So I'm not going to give it up today. I'm not. We have changed baits, but you know as well as I do, most of the fish that we've seen today have reacted a lot better towards the, the rip and wrap. And obviously most of the day I was using the four, Yep. but it was time to just go a little bit bigger and just try to um, get the attention of those larger fish. Yeah, the trout loved it. He did. So I am going to continue with him. And I'm going to get him back down there. Well, we're at that time of the day where we're going to have to put a bow on this thing. We kind of hoped that we would see a run of fish as we started to lose some light in the afternoon, but that just didn't happen. The wind died down and the little bit of fish activity that we did have just stopped. And, you know, anytime we come out here on the ice with the cameras, we want to put together a great show, put a lot of fish on the ice. But we were faced with some incredibly adverse conditions today, a lot like many of you at home face. You know, you can't choose when you fish. If you're going to go fishing on the weekend and it's going to be cold, you go anyway. And that's what we did. And we were able to put together a couple of presentations that put some fish on the ice. And they're not presentations that most anglers would think about when you start talking about cold front walleyes. Yeah, it really came to our surprise too, you know, and we knew we were going to be faced with tough conditions and, you know, typically what we do is we downsize, we scale back, we slow our presentations down. And we did do that. We changed different sizes, colors. The fish just didn't show any positive uh, reaction to them at all. Um, but I've been using this rip and wrap for a couple days and um, still under these conditions, they reacted to them. Um, I just think that they react to the, that bait being um, something that just stimulates their um, lateral line, uh, just makes them angry, you know, so. It doesn't matter to us as fishermen, why? Just as long as they do. As long so. as they eat it, yes. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the big sucker minnows, that did take the biggest fish today. So that was a nice surprise. We had a couple of opportunities on fish that we had hooked up that popped off. You know, if you land a couple of those extra fish, it ends up being a pretty good day. It does. Well, Paul, as always, I hey. love fishing with you. Absolutely. Let's do it again soon. Absolutely. It was a pleasure of mine, as always. Love fishing with you. We've had a lot of good times on the ice and open water, and uh, we'll get together soon here shortly, probably south, York County, and uh, we'll be faced with better conditions. You're going to get some ice, <laughs> and you're about to get really busy, so I'm yeah. glad we got this in. Yeah. You know, for you guys at home that were watching today's show, we really hope that some of the techniques we shared today will put some fish on the ice for you in the future. So from Paul and I, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.